welcome to our Wednesday Bible study. We are just excited that you chose to be a part of this study on today. We continue our series on the Holy Spirit, and so we're going, we're going to get right into our study for this day. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we love you, we thank you, we adore you, we praise your high and holy name. Lord, uh, we just come to you this day asking that you will bless our time here together. We pray that you will strengthen our hearts. We pray that you would continue to keep us safe. We thank you for protecting us from dangers seen and unseen. Lord, we pray for our peace of mind, for our well-being during uh, this season. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today we'll be looking at Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. There is, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace because the mindset on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Great passage of scripture, Romans chapter eight is perhaps the most important scripture in the Bible when it comes to teachings about the Holy Spirit. And when we look at Romans chapter 8, the word of the Lord declares that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's an important phrase, in Christ Jesus, because the blessings of Roman eight, Romans 8 are for those who are in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit uh, is referred to in this text as the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. He gives us life, frees us from the law of sin and death. He frees us from the curse of the fall. Uh, so the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. What the law could not do, God did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh as an offering for sin. And Christ fulfilled the requirements of the law and those who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit, the requirements of the law have been fulfilled through the sacrifice of Christ Jesus. We are to walk according to, live according to the spirit. The best life that we can possibly live is in the spirit of God. Often when people uh, talk about the Holy Spirit, they uh, are uh, thinking about an ecstatic experience. Uh, they say that it was something that they really can't explain. They just uh, felt the movement of the spirit within them. It's something that, that just hit them. And it's as if the spirit takes over. But the reality is that life in the spirit is not about an experience. It is about an existence. Life in the spirit is not about an experience. It is about an existence. Many people want a Holy Ghost experience without a Holy Ghost existence. They want to have this ecstatic moment, this ecstatic experience of uh, being filled with the Spirit, of being in the Spirit, but they don't want to walk, don't want to live in the Spirit. Uh, too often we want to shout without being sanctified. Uh, we want to get our praise on, but neglect our prayer life. We want hallelujah without holiness. God has not called us 
to an experience. He has called us to an existence. Be holy for uh, he is holy. God desires for us to live in step with the spirit, live life in the spirit. Uh, Paul spells out two mindsets. He spells out the carnal mind uh, and the spiritual mind. There's a mindset of the flesh and a mindset of the spirit. We either have a mind that is controlled by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, or we have a mind controlled by the spirit of God. The carnal mind is this mind that is set on the flesh. Uh, it is set on the evil nature. It is a sinful mind. It is a mind that an unsaved person has habitually dominated by the sinful nature. The carnal mind deliberately sets itself against those things uh, that are of God and on those things that define the sinful nature. The carnal mind is set on sin. The carnal mind uh, just won't do what God wants it to do, nor is it even capable of doing what God wants it to do. It won't act right because it can't act right. And since it can't act right, then it's a matter of impossibility for those who are carnally minded to please God. So those who are in the flesh, whose mind is set on the flesh, cannot please God. The mind set on the flesh is wicked. However, uh, its wickedness does not always appear overtly immoral or wicked. Uh, the mindset on the flesh can be focused on goodness without an awareness of godliness. Uh, I'm sure we all know good people who are, who are not Christians. We know good people who are uh, have a good heart, but they are not children of God. They're not obeyed the gospel. And what we discover is that you can be a good person, but being a good person does not necessarily make you right with God. You can focus on good deeds and on bettering society without embracing the gospel. Uh, every major religion encourages its people to be good. Uh, and so being a good person does not necessarily translate into godliness. It does not translate into a Christ-centered, gospel-centered lifestyle. Of the mindset on the flesh can go through the motions religiously without connecting to God spiritually. Uh, there, there are people who are religious in their being, but they have not had a connection to the spirit of God. The carnal mind is a mind that finds its basis in this world that focuses on its, uh, focuses its thoughts on the physical and the material instead of on the spiritual, instead of on God. It is a mind that exempts God. Uh, did you know that it's possible for you to exempt God from your life without being hostile toward, toward God? Indifference towards God is possible. And indifference is just as dangerous as rebellion towards God. The mindset on the flesh is the mind that's not focused on the things of God. And it's, it's not in the nature of the flesh to do what God wants it to do. That's why we should not be surprised when people who are not Christians act like they are not Christians. They really can't help it. Uh, Paul makes it clear that it is impossible for those who are in the flesh to please God. Uh, they just can't help themselves. So don't be surprised when your coworkers lie. Don't be caught off guard when your non-family, non-Christian family members uh, act like they don't know the Lord. It's in their nature. Uh, we have a problem in our nature. Uh, and so God desires to change our nature. And long before Paul wrote Romans 8, God revealed uh, to the prophet Ezekiel that he would fix man's nature. Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 25 through 27. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27. Then 
this is what the Lord says. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your unfiltheredness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. You and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. Uh, here we have the prophecy concerning God putting his spirit in his people. Uh, see, there was a struggle to please God while living in the flesh. So God said, I'm going to cleanse you of your filthiness. I'm going to sprinkle clean water on you, I'm going to cleanse you from the filthiness and from your idols. So God promised that he would cleanse man. God knew that humans needed forgiveness. He promised that he would provide a way to clean up our mess ups. But he didn't stop there. Uh, if he would have just cleansed us, we would have done what pigs do. As soon as he washed us, we would have gone back to the mud. Uh, the problem wasn't just that we were filthy. The problem was that we loved getting filthy. Uh, the minds of men and women were too messed up uh, to just clean up and leave alone. So God said, I'm going to give them a new mind and put a new spirit within. And since the human spirit is hard and callous and stubborn, and since there is no spirit on earth that is able to please God, God said, I will give you my spirit. The spirit that I'm going to give you knows what I want knows what pleases me, he knows what makes me happy, and he will empower you to keep my word. And this promise made to Ezekiel is now fulfilled in Christ. Uh, so when we come back to the book of Romans, we see that there's a blessing for those who are spiritually minded, who have set their minds uh, on the things of the spirit, whose mind are, minds are controlled, dominated by the Spirit of God. And before one becomes a Christian, he or she may have a desire to please God, but not the ability to please God. Yes, it's possible to want to please God, want to make God happy, but yet somehow you're not able to do it. Uh, that's why Paul would say in Romans chapter 7, verses uh, 18 through 20, for uh, I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For the willing is present in me, but the doing of the good is not. For the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I am doing the very thing I want to do, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. Uh, mankind had a problem, uh, but I'm so glad that although I cannot please God with my fleshly mind, I now have his spirit, which means I have a new mind that is able to please God. See, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to go with our desire to please God. And then he gives us greater desire to go with his ability. So he gives us the ability to please God. And then he gives us greater desire to please God, to go with his ability to please God. So the, when we are living in the spirit, we have a greater desire to do the things of the Lord and we are empowered. We're able to do the things that please the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the activating force behind the desire to please God. The power is not in us to make God happy. The power is in his spirit that is in us. Uh, so when I fail to please God, I need to ask, was it because of my lack of desire or because I'm trying to rely on my own strength and ability? 
See, when I walk in the spirit, I'm able to please God and I will not seek to fulfill the desires of the flesh. Life in the spirit means a mindset on the things of the spirit. Your mindset is determined by what you set your mind on. Your mindset is determined by what you set your mind on. You will deliberately set your mind on the flesh or on the spirit. Uh, the mindset on the flesh reflects uh, the sinful, but the mindset on the spirit reflects the heavenly, the godly, the true, and the upright. The mindset on the spirit is Christ-centered, God-pleasing, seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness first, glorifying God. The mindset on the spirit is focused on developing spiritual character and fruit. The mindset on the spirit is focused on carrying out the ministry and the mission of Christ. He's focused on knowing, believing, and understanding the divine nature. Uh, she's focused on being conformed more and more to the image of Christ. The men and women of God, the brothers and sisters of God, the children of God who have their minds set on the spirit and not the flesh have an attitude that says less of me and more, more of him. A spiritual mind my brothers and sisters, is not a matter of willpower. A spiritual mind is a matter of God's power. And the mind that is set on the flesh is life and peace. When the things of God dominate your outlook, you will consistently be responsive to the direction of the Holy Spirit. And when one is consistently responsive to the direction of the Holy Spirit, then there is life and there's peace. This peace allows you to enjoy all the benefits of being right with God. It is a peace that pervades your whole life and cannot be disturbed by the conflicts and the chaos that life brings. We have life with God and peace with God when we have the Spirit of God, life in His fullness and abundance, and peace that surpasses all understanding. And so we should walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Uh, it's my hope that you don't just want a Holy Ghost experience, but you want a Holy Ghost existence to live in the power of the Spirit of God. Uh, think and reflect on Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. What other insights do uh, you see there? What do you gain? What do you learn from this passage of Scripture? Discuss it with a friend. Share your insights with others in your time in prayer. Then for next time, if the Lord permits, we plan to look at Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 17, to see and hear what the Lord has to say through his word for the people of God. If you desire to put on Christ, to be in Christ Jesus, you can complete your obedience to the gospel through faith in Jesus Christ, repenting of your sins, confessing Jesus as Lord, and being baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. If you want to be saved, we encourage you to reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to facilitate your obedience to the gospel so that you can be in Christ and enjoy all the blessings of being a child of God, the blessings of living life in the spirit of God. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Uh, may you have a great rest of your week and continue to glorify God. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Uh, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, we encourage you to do so. Just click that subscribe button, and that way you don't miss when there's new content available uh, for you. Uh, it's our prayer that God will continue to keep you safe, keep you healthy. We look forward to seeing you again real soon.